My name is Nilgün Anadolu Okur. I'm a professor of African American Studies at Temple University. The most popular question I receive is, how did you study African American Studies? What made you study African American theater and poetry? It has a story behind it. Uh, my doctoral dissertation was on the poetry of Amiri Baraka, a poet from Newark, New Jersey. I studied him when I was overseas, and his poetry and his plays inspired me and told me that there is something that I have to learn more than the civil rights. This kind of enthusiasm uh, started me to look more deeply into race relations in the United States. And during those years, I received a Fulbright scholarship to study African American studies at Temple University. At that time, this university had just opened its first doctoral program in African American studies. And I was one of the lucky recipients of that kind of knowledge. Charles Fuller was teaching here. People were talking about Larry Neal. Bobby Seale was teaching a course. So in this lively environment, Afrocentricity was growing as a new philosophical movement under the leadership of Molefi Asante. And I learned much from them. Then years passed, and I started studying Underground Railroad. There was a picture right next to my office. I didn't know who this woman was, but she turned out to be Harriet Tubman, and I had to learn more about her. So I started lecturing about her. And I traveled all around Pennsylvania, little towns, churches, libraries. I lectured on Underground Railroad and the Freedom Moment in Pennsylvania. After a few years, uh, a book came out, and that was called Contemporary African American Theater. It did not stop there. I continued writing on Frederick Douglass and how he contributed to the Freedom Movement, which really brought me into my final and most recent book. The relationship between Frederick Douglass and William Lloyd Garrison, two abolitionists of mid-19th century, was so important to dismiss. So I started researching, and I found out that they were very good friends for 10 years. But Douglas never yielded to Garrison. He was really doing his own thing as he was lecturing and coming from an Afrocentric perspective about the importance of the spoken word for the African who had been emancipated. He was speaking for his brothers and sisters. This was very similar to what Harry Tubman did. This was exactly the same thing and for the same reason that Henry Box Brown escaped. I was enveloped in these beautiful journeys. And I believe the reason why I still study abolitionist movement has something to do about today. Because Garrison and Douglas had hope that if they collaborated, and they did, they would be able to stop slavery. From 1841 to 1849, they were very good friends. They supported each other, lectured all around the United States. They even traveled to England. And as a result of this, there was a cooperation of abolitionists. They created a circle of writers, poets, speakers, just like themselves. So when we speak about the abolitionist movement, we have to remember that it had two significant leaders, an African-American former slave and a white journalist. When they met, they were both very young. Douglas was many years younger than Garrison, but it did not stop them. Their friendship grew until Douglas decided to start his own newspaper. This meant a little bit rivalry for Garrison but he still respected his friend, and he was the first one to celebrate Douglas on his book. I see lots of parallels between their friendship and what we can accomplish today in order to stop racism and discrimination. There's always hope. We have to work together. We have to respect each other. And that is the key.